Well, uh, as you know, some of the non-destructive test techniques which are used for evaluating the condition of a machinery component like ultrasonics, dye penetrant test, eddy current, acoustic emission, thermography. These are some of the techniques which they are not online unlike vibration monitoring or motor current signature analysis, but usually when we do a NDT which is known as non-destructive test technique to decide on the quality of the product. So, some of the NDT techniques which we have covered so far ultrasonics, then we have this radiography, dye, dye penetrant test, and then today we will look into acoustic emission. and eddy current. Okay. So, let us see in this lecture what is this acoustic emission and eddy current and how it is used for finding out the faults in the machinery or the product quality. Usually, they are used as a go no go test technique. for quality control, but in many process industries be it a chemical plant, be it a oil refinery, many of the parameters like particularly pipelines or structures they may undergo defects. Now, what could be the defect in pipeline as you all know could be crack in the walls or the surface and another in structures we may have a crack corrosion which leads to reduced thickness. all these can be very easily measured by either eddy current or acoustic emission. So, what is this eddy current testing we will see. See they can be used for all these applications to measure the metal thickness, to find out the heat treatment condition, plating thickness, cladding thickness, insulation thickness, diameter of tubing or bar stock, cracks, seams, porosity, corrosion, erosion, segregation, inclusion etcetera. And you recall when we discussed about vibration monitoring particularly of journal bearings, we used Uh, proximity probe this actually dependent on the gap thickness here so we gave a primary excitation to a and then we got a secondary voltage depending on the magnetic reluctance. So, this is a proximity probe, but here we are talking about an eddy current probe. When we take a coil okay, to a conducting material, 
Okay, an AC coil has been given and then it produces a magnetic field. So, in this conducting material because of the presence of this magnetic field very close to it eddy currents will be generated and this material has to be conducted. So, all our test materials have to be conducted. Now, if there is a surface defect a crack this eddy current intensity is going to change and if I can sense this eddy current magnetic field due to the eddy current I can indirectly get what is wrong in this material or on the surface which has created a change in the generated eddy current. Okay, so, this is basically the principle, but the material has to be conducting unlike ultrasonics where the ultrasonic wave can pass into any material it did not be conductive of course, the power of the ultrasonic waves would change, but in eddy current that is not the case. So, how is eddy current used to detect a crack if you will see here I have a magnetic field from this test coil which I move close. So, the magnetic field from the eddy current will be generated. Okay. Now, if there is a crack the intensity or the magnitude of this eddy current is going to change qualitatively. So, this could be a sense in the voltage measuring device which you have. So, this is a very easy way to find out surface cracks. Of course, you know surface cracks can easily be seen sometimes under naked eye or today with you know help of vision based systems cameras and so on, but they are sometimes time consuming they require to be focused. So, but then if we have for example, you are producing large large number of components. So, they can go to an eddy current test section Okay. and these are moving maybe in uh, some system. So, you can have an automated eddy current test system. So, if there is a defect on the surface there will be change in the voltage. So, this is going to give us an indication. So, you see such techniques are very good for crack detection for surface defect detection and so on, but then one has to keep in mind certain parameters. Okay. So, eddy current density is greatest at the surface and it decreases with depth. Okay. So, this depends on the material properties. So, one has to be careful about how thin or how thick your material should be whether we are going to measure on the surface and so on and how fine can your crack be. I mean are you talking on a surface are you talking about crack of the order of 1 micron or 1 nanometer or 1 millimeter. So, based on that your eddy current power would change. So, as you know the for high frequency and for low frequency the intensity is going to change. Okay if the depth is more the intensity would reduce okay, and so on. Right. So, we have a larger intensity if the depth is less and particularly at high frequencies and so on. So, when we select eddy current probes one has to be careful about the frequency of the signal that is the primary excitation signal which again has to be an alternating current signal because it will produce a magnetic field and next is the depth to which we want to measure. Of 
of course, though it has to be conducting, the effect on good conductor, conductor or a poor conductor is also influence, and that is comes from the magnetic permeability. Okay, the effect of permeability is also there. So all these factors will also influence conductivity and permeability. They will influence your selection of the eddy current probe. Right. So, some of the parameters high frequency, high conductivity, high permeability, we get an effect like this as a function of depth. But for low frequency, low conductivity, and low permeability, the standard depth is more. So, these parameters one has to decide. But when we talk about detection of discontinuities using eddy current, if the crack is parallel to the eddy currents, it is not detected. So, one has to be careful how to rove them in the direction. But if they are perpendicular to the eddy current which is being generated on the surface, they can easily be detected. So, one has to be careful in the orientation. And sometimes, you know, edge effects you know while you are practically using signals you know very close to the edge they can give out signals which will mislead the ndt inspector that a crack has occurred so certain techniques exist to avoid such edge effects so the inductive coupling actually happens here we have a primary magnetic field and the Secondary magnetic field, as I just mentioned to you. But there is a lift off and a fill factor. So, lift off is defined by the diameter d0 square by d1 square, okay, and the usually the fill factor is we should go for a 70 to 90 percent of fill factor, okay how much we should expose that area for eddy current testing. So, this is what we have to target. So, for different sizes maybe we have to rove the eddy current probe or we have to find a different eddy current probe. So, there is a phase lag which can be measured as the function of the penetration depth. So, some of the, so as you see in eddy current there are many test variables. Okay. So, it has an effect on the surface intensity and depth of penetration. So, to a normal user you see unless you are very sure with the test protocol you may get different results. Okay. So, that is why because there are so many variables which will affect your eddy current, the material conductivity, relative magnetic permeability, geometry, discontinuity, testing frequency, electric magnetic coupling, coil, current, temperature. So, if I change the variables which are there are many, it will affect the surface intensity and the depth of penetration. So, we need to have a test protocol for eddy current testing. So, for one of a kind measurement eddy current sometimes you may get a value which may be difficult for you to compare with, but when you have a end of a line testing in a production plant. for quality inspection. So, eddy current is a very good application. Of course, the product has to be metally uh, conducting. So, some of the probes which you will see here external probes, internal probes, you know, external coil. So, the probes can be arranged and all necessary what happens is 
this material has to be conducting and there has to be a certain AC signal flowing through this coil. So, sometimes mode of operation could be absolute or differential then so, this is pretty uh, comparative okay, and differentiative. differential is when we have a pair of coils. So, we can see the difference. So, typically this is how particular views of some commercially available eddy current probes they come in different forms and all you require is a eddy current test equipment with multi frequency equipment. Okay, and then you have an analog meter and then recurrent probe. So, the secondary voltage magnetic field which is inducing a secondary voltage can be sensed and then you can use it for a quality testing. Of course, there are certain calibration standards. For example, holes in a tube holes are made of different diameters okay. And as a percentage of the wall thickness, a certain calibration standards are there so that we can calibrate the voltage level corresponding to the diameter which is being measured. Okay. So, some of the testing procedure balance on a sound portion, set sensitivity, set frequency, draw the calibration curve, take signal with constant speed because you know when you when you moving the probe, speed has to be constant and note the phase lag and amplitude for each indication. Okay. So, sometimes as you have seen with frequency they will get affected and so on. So, we can use and typical frequencies of eddy current 50 kilohertz, 300 kilohertz and so on. You see if this is the your calibration standard to monitor the thickness you are moving the probe okay, and conversion of the eddy current signal to a corresponding thickness. As you can see qualitatively if we have seen here 3.3 meters or 2.64 meters it is the thickness of the pipe and that has changed okay, if I am moving this probe, but then whatever voltage is coming you need to know that this corresponds to 3.3 mm this when the probe is here it corresponds to 2.64 mm. So, such thickness monitoring methodology or calibration needs to be done before even we apply the eddy current probe for any testing. Similarly, in tube signals you know, the bottom of the tube sheet okay, and then there is a minimum thickness etcetera. A crack has occurred okay, and then you see cross section of the crack. So, this can be used to measure selection of the probe. Okay depending on the crack location, how thick the diameter should be. And sometimes as you will see such surface defects if you can see in this images, there are man, many surface defects on the pipe. Okay. Of course, to our visual eyes we can see it and of course, you know today the technology is such that you can do image processing. by having a vision based systems. But eddy current can be used to also monitor them. So, now we will talk about another technique which we had told in the beginning this is acoustic emission. The definition of acoustic emission or a brief paragraph I have included here that all of you can perhaps read. I am just going to read it out for the benefit of all. All solid materials have a certain elasticity. They become strained or compressed under external forces and spring back when released. The higher the frequency and thus the elastic deformation, the higher is the elastic energy. If the elastic limit is exceeded, a fracture occurs immediately if it is a brittle material or after a certain plastic deformation. If the elastically strained material contains a defect like 
a welded joint defect, a non-metallic inclusion, incompletely welded gas bubble or similar cracks. Cracks may occur at heavily stressed points. Rapidly relaxing the material by a fast dislocation. This rapid release of elastic energy is what we call an AE event or acoustic emission event. It produces an elastic wave that propagates and can be detected by appropriate sensors and analyzed. The impact at its origin is a wide band movement up to some megahertz. The frequency of AE testing of metallic objects is in the range of ultrasound usually between 100 and 300 kilohertz. So, with this explanation of acoustic emission, I must tell you this is not the same as sound or noise signal, which we have talked in the audible range from 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Okay. Acoustic emission is an elastic wave phenomenon in materials when stressed and they are at frequency more than 100 kilohertz. They are in the ultrasonic range, maybe even up to 2 megahertz. So, we are talking about a very, very high frequency acoustic wave. Okay. So, being high frequency, they are directional. It has nothing to do with noise control of machineries or human hearing. Okay. In fact, they are in the ultrasonic range. So, human being can never hear acoustic emission, but what I can say is materials cry when they are stressed. So, this can be used to find out the condition of the uh, defect in the material. Imagine a body okay, wherein there is a crack. So, if loads are applied, so they are going to give out waves in all directions and if I put a AE sensor, I will get this signal and this can be used to know the condition. So, application of acoustic emission again non destructive testing of heavily mechanically stressed components or structures particularly in materials research in inspection and quality assurances, monitoring of welding and wood drying processes, real time leakage test and location within various components particularly corrosion has occurred, tank leaks and high voltage partial discharge even in large transformers. This is a view of a large pressure vessel of diameter 4 meter length 20 meter doing uh, acoustic emission testing. So, what happens if a defect has occurred and on the surface I have put 3 4 sensors basically like I was mentioning in the case of ultrasonics the TDOA time difference of arrival of the signal can be used to locate the fault. Okay. But only problem is the acoustic emissions are high frequency signals. So, they come out in bursts. So, they can be either bursts or continuous signals. Okay. So, transients occur as in burst or in continuous. So, this is a typical acoustic emission look at the value here this is in microseconds. So, this is a very very high frequency phenomena. 
So, there is a challenge to analyze the systems that the modern data acquisition systems we are not able to sample the signals at high sampling rates. Of course, today uh, and that is why they were not popular, but today we when we have DAQ systems which can sample high frequency signals, they can be used and this is a typical continuous burst AE signal. Okay. And there is an Kaiser effect in acoustic emission. Okay. So, at this, this Dr. Kaiser he says due to uh, indicates an irreversible process during plastic deformation under strain which can be shown in a piezoelectric crystal. So, particularly in an and this is this piezoelectric crystal which is sensing this AE signal. The basically the sensor is again in piezoelectric crystal. Okay. So, we have the test mechanisms in the process chain, we have the test object, the source the wave is being generated, we have an AE sensor and then the data acquisition units. Okay. So, this is a typical acoustic emission sensor, we have a wear plate, the sensing element and we have a sensor, but then because this being a very high frequency signal, a signal to noise ratio is a very big issue in AE measurements. and one has to be careful about. Of course, the signal again being very low, there is a pre-amplifier which is used to amplify the signal and of course, you can use a filter sets depending on your application because if digital signal processing is not available at high frequencies, we can use analog filters. Okay. And some of these glossaries, you can find the details here in these slides. So, typical the arrival time if at a particular sensor location from a sensor and then I can have some limits and then the features of a transient AE signals is the rise time, the maximum amplitude, number of overshoots and so on and this is how we can quantify the signal because essentially the AE signal has to be captured to give us some clue as to the condition of the machine or the component. Okay and we can calibrate by this pencil lead brick test. So, this is what I meant by the DOA, you can see the for the different sensors the time difference, time of arrival is different okay. and then through a triangulation technique you can find out the source. Okay. So, more of these uh, you can find and then you can refer to my website iitnoise.com for the details or you can contact me. Okay. Thank you.